This one is the second installment of the new ITX boards that MSI had revealed earlier this year. We looked at the BA50i already, which is for AMD, and this one is the BA60i, which is for Intel Core Ultra 2 CPUs. Welcome to Machines and More. On this channel, I cover a variety of PC building topics. I do have a personal interest in small form factor builds and today I'm reviewing this mini ITX board. I did a build video with this board recently in the Lian Li A4H20. The B860i motherboard from MSI is for Intel Core Ultra 2 CPUs. Interestingly, MSI chose to launch these ITX boards later in the CPU cycle. This is in their MPG category, which is where they assign their more mid-range featured boards. Although it's worth noting that since the MSI Z690i Unify, uh, there hasn't been that top level MEG designation for an ITX board. So this may be as good as it gets uh, right now. Both the higher end Intel chipset Z890i and the forthcoming X870i are both in that MPG category as well. This one features the same silver finish that you'll see on pretty much all recent generation MSI ITX boards as well. Uh, pros and cons to this type of setup, it might be neutral enough to fit both white and other color themes, but at the same time, it's not perfect for either if we're being critical. BA60i chipset, example CPUs you might pair with this could be 265K or 285K, as well as the non-K 200 CPUs. Lately, I have been pretty happy with the 245K uh, that I tested this build uh, with. And I think if you're doing an Intel build, it's hard to go wrong with the general performance that you can get out of the 245K. The board is passively cooled. Uh, on top of the board, you have a notched out heatsink and that is thermally connected to the IO side heatsink here. And underneath these two heatsinks are 810 amp smart power stages. So very powerful. Uh, you will not see a mini fan anywhere on this board, which is refreshing. And at the bottom here is this primary M.2 and that's cooling your drive just with this chunk because this section is not connected with a heat pipe uh, to the other power delivery cooling elements. So this top metal piece really is just touching your drive and that's a Gen 5 M.2 spec. I will mention now that for some builds, this is very important because this board simply will not work with your cooling system. I'm not sure why they designed it this way, but the height of the IO side heatsink over here is just a bit too much. Uh, for example, with coolers like the Thermalright AXP90, which is you know, a very common cooler for an ITX bolt, the wider base footprint there will cover this area and the cooler won't be able to mount because this is higher than the CPU height. Uh, most tower coolers and AIO cold plates should be okay in this regard, but it is a very odd design choice given that this is a mini ITX board and many users for one reason or another will be using a cooler like this. Expansion slot here is Gen 5, uh, nothing fancy with this last, just press down to release. Two DIMMs, 6400 to 8600 mega transfers per second is possible as an OC. And you have two set SATA data ports, uh, type A 5G header here and a 10G Type-C header. You have your fan headers at the top here. CPU and pump header are on top, two amp and three amp respectively. The one that's designated sys fan uh, with a one amp max is over here south of the 24 pin motherboard connector. And that I think is a nicer setup versus the B850i where the two are kind of off to the side-ish here and one is you know closer towards the bottom here. Here you do also get the RGB headers at the top and let's turn our attention to the back. There is a space for a Gen 4 M.2. With this board, you don't get back plates or anything like that to protect here. So you do have to be careful. Um, that is typical for the MPG designation because the last place I think I saw MSI board, uh, ITX board with back shields was with the S tier Z690i. So turning our attention over to the rear IO as a motherboard for Intel Core Ultra 2, even though this is only a you know so-called B level board, you do get a Thunderbolt 4 port and there that's very nice. There's a single HDMI if you're looking for onboard VGA, uh, four 5G USB A ports and two, uh, two 10G ports. One is uh, type A and one's type C. Now compared to a board like the ASUS's B860-i4 ports, that one has the Thunderbolt 4, and it's got three 5G A ports and one 10G port. 
So the MSI has an additional 5G A port. However, the ASUS has two 2.0 ports, plus the Type-C port is a 20 gig one versus the 10G on the MSI. One of the unique features for this current crop of MSI ITX boards is the Intel 5G NIC. Now I understand the, the uh, dilemma with this, it's not 10G, but for most folks getting the most out of this will require 10G equipment, right? So it's kind of in an odd place, but still, you know, with 2.5G being the common offering in mini ITX, it's hard not to compliment MSI for including this in a Wi-Fi 7 card as well uh, with the BA50i AMD board, you are able to use a regular antenna with these or, or the included quick release type that MSI supplies. And I like this much more than the ones that just, you know, flat out force you to use their proprietary antenna solution. Audio on this one, it's using an older co codec in the ALC897 uh, that is paired with an optical and it's got a mic in and line out. So compared to ASUS, the ASUS has slightly better ALC1220P. And you do have that onboard audio header right here in this corner. The MSI has a clear CMOS button, just like the ASUS B860-I. However, it also has flash BIOS capability, which the ASUS does not. And that's a very nice quality of life item. Perhaps that's not as critical as the clear CMOS button, but this is a very nice feature to have. Overall, I think the board is well built and although it's not as beefy as the ASUS, it is still very good. Now this is the second sample I've tested. The early one did not post and I couldn't get it to work and uh, I haven't had any issues with this particular one and there's no reason for me to believe that there's any widespread issue with these because that kind of thing does happen every now and then with motherboards. I tested this one out with the A4H2O build in uh, with the 245K and as mentioned this would be a good one to pair with this level of board uh, you don't get CPU overclocking anyway which for that level of CPU and board is typically not going to be much of a penalty. Um, so let's take a quick look at the performance versus the ASUS B860-i. I did see very similar CPU all-core clocks. The board temps are quite safe on the board, so as long as you have a decent amount of airflow around it, it should be enough to help with the passive cooling. Uh, for an extended gaming session, again, these uh, most temps are very safe. Now with things warming up around the chassis, the board temps do get a little bit warmer, but that's still very normal. I did observe the P cores reliably hitting 5.0 gigahertz, which is what you can expect with the 245K for gaming. So the CPU performance, uh, at least from what I'm seeing, would not be a differentiating factor if you're comparing against the ASUS. Best pros of this board, it's got a passive cooling setup, 5GE NIC, and overall very good IO, uh, user forward features. And as a whole, I think the setup is slightly better than what they offer on the BA50i. And that's kind of the irony here because the core Ultra 2 CPU offerings just aren't as robust versus AMD, but they are, however, you know, offering a very good price to performance ratio right now. The biggest con with this board, well, you know, if it won't work with your low profile cooler because of the way they designed this heatsink, that's just not gonna work for your build, right? So perhaps I hope in a future iteration, they can improve on that. Uh, pricing for this board is 220 US from what I've seen lately, and that's actually $10 more than the ASUS BA60-i. So I, I, I do think both boards are good offerings uh, with the ASUS having that 20G USB-C port in addition to the Thunderbolt 4 port and having more robust build quality uh, versus the MSI having the 5G NIC. And, and do keep in mind that with Thunderbolt 4, uh, you can easily use a 10G adapter on the market if that's more what you need. And in that uh, specific type of scenario there, I'd rather have the ASUS since you would still have a 20G port for a faster external drive since your uh, Thunderbolt port is uh, consumed. Now, given the current pricing difference, I think the general or gaming user will find the ASUS more palatable. And then if you specifically want the 5G NIC built in, that's when I would consider the MSI. So pricing does change all the time. So if this does get a little bit cheaper than the ASUS, then that would be a little bit more attractive. So if you enjoyed the view and found this one helpful, as always, any questions, let me know down below. The links for the build and the board are also down below. Big thanks for watching.